Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with Heritage Pride Custom Firearms. Back for video three of the Heritage Pride Homestead uh, Gun Shop or Gun Room. And uh, as you can see, um, you know, if you've seen the other two videos, you know we're framed and our, our wiring is roughed in. Um, last night, I actually finished getting the OSB sheeting up and I got our door put in here. Um, so I got that installed last night. I didn't make a video, it's pretty self explanatory. You just put the sheeting up there and nail it on and then uh, set your door into place. Um, as far as doors go, sometimes they're tricky to install, but uh, there's nothing I can tell you that will make you be able to install a door. Uh, it's all basic just leveling and plumbing and, and putting it in. Um, so they're not, there's nothing fancy to installing a door. Um, any other door installation video out there will show you what you need to know. But I will tell you this, to install doors, you've just got to do it. I mean, and, and you won't be good at it until you do a few of them. So uh, it takes time to, to get good at putting doors in and learning some tricks and, and things like that that work best for you. So um, anyway, got the door put in. This is the door we salvaged. It's a solid wood core steel covered fire door, fire rated door. Um, got that put in last night. Um, we salvaged it from Wisconsin and so that saved us about $200 right there by salvaging this door from up in Wisconsin. So um, that was worth hauling it back down here. So now that all that's in, I, I started thinking um, I want to do something kind of cool outside of the gun room. So this isn't necessarily a gun room video. Uh, but it's a good little how-to video. Maybe it'll give you some ideas or whatever. What we're going to be doing is putting some shelving on this whole wall here. Um, that'll give us a little bit more storage out here in the garage. Since I'm taking away so much of the garage space by putting the gun room out here, I'm going to build some shelves. And in doing so, what I have decided to do, and this is kind of a cool thing, uh, not necessarily uh, needed, but just wanted to do it uh, just to do it, I think. Um, and so I'm going to put a hidden door here. And so what will happen is you'll have your shelves here and shelves over here. And in the center, there will be a section of shelves that looks like it ties in with the rest of the shelves. But in all reality, it will be a, door, a hidden door. So uh, the whole shelving unit will basically open like a door, revealing this door back behind it that will get us into the gun room. Now, it's not ideal for a hidden room because when you come in, you're going to see that there's a wall and there's something behind there. So there's a room behind there. You know there's a room behind there. Um, but hopefully in the scurry of somebody breaking and entering, um, you know, in a rush or something like that, either one, they'll overlook it because the door is not exposed. So they'll, you know, if they break in this door, which this would be the easiest door to come in with the six panel, the only thing is they're not going to get far in here because we have the door going into the house and uh, it's covered, well the whole thing is covered by alarm, but um, you're not going to get far without busting in another entry door. So hopefully in the scurry of things they'll kind of overlook the hidden door here or the idea that there's another room back here or maybe if they even think about it, once they, they'll think that uh, maybe that's accessed from inside the house and then once they get in there, they'll just kind of not put two and two together. So that's kind of the idea behind it. Um, like I said, it's not ideal purpose for it, but one, it allows me to use this, if nothing else, it allows me to use this space where this door is for additional storage. And so that's a plus even if it's not necessarily a hidden door or something like that. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of the plan here. And so uh, I've already gotten started a little bit, so let me grab the camera and I'll kind of bring you up to speed on, on where I'm at. And then uh, I'll do a little bit, show you, and, and things like that. This isn't really a good video to kind of just have you sit and watch me measure and cut the same boards over and over. Um, but anyway, total cost for this project, um, for all the shelving uh, in here, is about $150. Bucks. Um, I use 2x10s when I do shelving. Uh, or two by twelves, or two by whatever uh, for shelving, uh, just because they're they're not that much more expensive, <coughs> and it gives you a lot of additional strength. Um, a lot of people tend to use um, one by lumber uh, for shelving like this. It's a uh, one by is actually three quarters of an inch thick. Two by lumber is actually an inch and a half thick. So that gives you that's like doubling this up, and for 
Uh, about the same price, realistically, if you go and buy a finished uh, one by 10, you're going to spend about the same amount of money, if not even a little bit more, than a two by 10. Don't ask me why, that's just how it is. Um, so anyway, use the two by lumber, save you a little bit of money and give you a little bit more strength in your storage. That's what I use to build the shelves for the food storage over there. So this will give us a lot more storage here for things. I've got all kinds of little stuff, you know, screws and, and spray paints and stains and all that stuff that I have piled on the shelves up in Wisconsin. That will give our garage some more storage. And then uh, once this project's done, then we'll start moving inside and working on the, on the actual gun room. But uh, like I said, I just want to do a video. So let me grab the camera. I'll bring you up to speed, and then we'll, we'll get to work a little bit more. All right, so we're starting with our corner because that's where we want to uh, identify the height of everything. So what I've done is I've put my first runner board up the, up the wall there. And uh, that's going to be my outside style um, for, the, uh, for the shelf. And so I've got my height identified there. Now from there, I need to level because I don't want these shelves to go all the way to the floor. Two reasons. One for moisture. Buddy, quit. One for moisture. And one for um, the fact that my access door, my hidden door, is going to have casters on the bottom of it, which is going to raise that shelf off the ground. So if that shelf is up off the ground, but all the other shelves go all the way to the ground, then that just identifies something different, and which will cause curiosity. Um, but then also, like I said, for the moisture, we want to make everything, bring everything up level. So what I did was I went to the corner right there and I brought my that 2x4 I've got screwed to the wall. I brought the top of that up level with the bottom of our ledger board there, our style board. And that's going to identify the height of the bottom of our shelf. It's also going to allow us to give something for the weight of the shelf to set on to help attach it to the wall. And then we just bring a level. We level our board all the way from that corner all the way to that corner. And you can't see it from here so much, but it's about two inches off the ground over there, and it touches almost touches the ground over there. It's about a half inch off the ground over there. So that shows you how out of level the floor is, and you'll find that a lot of times with concrete. So our next agenda is to continue putting in our post styles, which there'll be one right there, and then there'll be another one right over here that'll go all the way up, and then we can start putting our shelving in between them. All right, so I'm going to get working on that, and then I'll bring you guys back on. All right, guys, you can see now I've got the uh, style posts in, and I've got the top runner across, all the way across the top, and you can't see it in the video, it's too short, but um, I've got our bottom piece in down here, and I'll show you that <coughs> in a couple of minutes. But basically, all we did was, like I said before, we got a level line across the bottom, and that gave us a starting point, right? And then once you get your top point up there, theoretically, you should be able to keep the same height on your styles all the way across on your posts, and that'll, that'll stay the same all the way across the top. So if you have the same height here and your bottom plate is level, then you'll be good all the way across with that same height. Um, so in our case, they were 90 and a half inches, and then that left us an inch and a half to put our top piece on, and that type brings us up. Uh, flush with the top of our plywood that's up there and that's eight feet high to the, t the very top um, because we're lifted off the ground a little bit down here so we've got these installed we've got one there in that corner one in this corner <coughs> and then because I was salvaging a two by six uh, door this this door is designed for a two by six wall um, so it's extra thick it's you know it's deeper than a regular standard two by four construction wall and since we used a 2x4 construction, I set the door out a little bit by putting 2x4s. I just framed my, rough framed my rough opening with some 2x4s. So when I put that door in, it actually pushed it out. So when we go inside, we've got enough room on the inside to run our, um, our whatever we decide to put up on the walls in there, whether it be half-inch plywood or, or sheetrock or whatever you choose to do. But that pushed us out so that it will set flush, which is what we want. When doing that, it gave me a nice little ledge to, to screw this to, to give it something to anchor to. Now, in your case, if you're doing something like this and you don't have that exact um, opportunity to do that, then um, you can just uh, put some, anchor, uh, some angle braces in there. 
and that'll that'll help sure it up. And I'll probably still put one down here in this bottom because we're not going to have a bottom shelf there to help hold this sturdy and square. So we'll still put one down at the bottom, and that'll help hold that all tight. Up top, it'll it'll stay good with with the um, the squareness of the of the top board up there, that top shelf. That'll hold it nice and tight. So at this point, like I said, just got all this done. It took a little bit longer than expected. We had a, a, a slight meltdown, and we had to take a break for some bite bites. So uh, now that we've got this done, I'm ready to start cutting my shelf, um, basically my shelf holders. Um, and the reason why we need those is just it sures it up, gives it a little bit more strength. Um, in, in both cases, in both sides, we've got this whole two by eight here, so when our shelf comes in, we can run long screws into it, and that'll hold okay. But you still want that added strength of some kind of bracket there um, to help hold the weight that's going to be on that shelf. And then in our corners, we can't screw from the outside. We would have to toenail, and that's not as strong. So you're going to want them over there. So to make it uniform, we're going to put them on both sides just to make it look right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using a 1 by piece of lumber. I found a piece of 1 by 12 that I had laying around. And I'm just going to set the fence up on the table saw and break me some strips to put for where my shelves are going to be. All right, I've got our fence set at eight and three quarter inches. Our, our uh, two by tens are nine and a quarter inches deep. Our, so our framing is nine and a quarter inches deep. We don't want our shelf uh, brackets to come out all the way to the end. So we want to leave them set in just a little bit. It just gives it a cleaner look. So what we're going to do is go ahead and cut these at eight and three quarter inches. So I've got the fence set there. I've got this one by 12. I'm going to go ahead and rip it down to eight and three quarter inches, and then that, and then that way we can just set our depth for how thick we want the um, the actual shelf brackets to be, and then uh, just set and rip the whole thing. So. All right, now I've got the fence set at an inch and a half. Now give us inch and a half wide shelf brackets, and that should be perfect. That should survive and be more than enough for what we need. Alright guys, so once you get your um, your shelf bracket or your shelf holders made, we got them ripped down on the table saw, inch and a half wide, and then our depth, our thickness of this is nine and a quarter, so we went eight and three quarter, excuse me, to let them set back a little bit. Now, if you're using something like pine, it's a good idea to use a countersink bit and countersink your holes, pre-drill and countersink your holes because this pine will, will split very easily when you run those screws through there. So I countersink, drilled and countersink all, uh, countersunk all of my screw holes and then I just use like an inch and five eighths screw in that to hold them too. Should be plenty <clears throat> for that. So you get those put on there and uh, I use a little level on it as I go. Even though I put a square here and a square the line, you still want to make sure that you're level. So put the level on it. Nothing worse than unlevel shelves. So uh, you do that, go up both sides, and uh, you pick your spacing depending on you know your usage, what you're going to be doing. Uh, my shelves over on the other wall are 16 inches, and that seems like a pretty perfect size. So the bottom I did 18, because you know you always have taller things that you want to put on the bottom. So put that on the bottom, and then they're 16 inches, 16 inches, and then this one up here is just a little bit taller. It's back up to 18 and then you'll have about a uh, 18 inch at the top as well. So that's the spacing that I chose. You can choose as much or as little as you want. So once you get those done, then you'll go ahead and, and cut your um, shelf boards to go in there. Okay. Now what I did, what you need to do if you're doing something like this, this style right here has to be perfectly level because that's our hinge side for the door, for the shelf door. So it has to be perfectly level. So 
I screwed it all into that 2x4 like I told you about before. But now that it's secured up top, I went ahead and loosened all the screws from about here down because I was out of level just about a quarter of an inch at the bottom. Okay, So the bottom needed to come in a quarter of an inch to make it level. So I loosened those up and then got that board level to get my measurement for my bottom shelf. And if this one's level, everything should be the same all the way up. So we'll cut those. Now, it's also a good idea because we're using pine not to screw directly into this. So what I chose to do is you start your screws and then turn them and toenail them to where they go down into the actual style there and not into the, the pine. Because once again, it'll split. So anyway, that's uh, that's how I'm doing that. I've got my 27 inch pieces cut and I'm just installing those now. Alright guys, so I just finished up the uh, the wall with the hidden door, um, the shelves and all that stuff. Sorry I didn't I didn't do any video footage of, of finishing it. Um, I just when I was building this door it just the wind was horrible today. Um, it blew like 60 miles an hour all day. It was ridiculous. And so the video footage would have been crap anyway because I was cutting most everything outside. And um, so anyway I'll, I'll, in just a second, I'll show you the, the insides of the, of the door. But um, basically, I'm happy with it. It turned out pretty good. Uh, you know, for the most part, I tried to um, blend it in to where it, you know, it was kind of uniform with everything else. And so that way it wouldn't stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, the big, the only real big disadvantage or giveaway is that the depth of this one is a lot less than the depth of the other ones. Um, you know, I've had a couple of friends come over today and, and look from out there and didn't even know that it existed. So they thought I'd just put some shelves up. So as far as that goes, I think it turned out pretty good. Um, and it functions like I want it to. We ended up um, using a piano hinge and tuck it in behind it here. And I'll show you that up close here in just a second. But uh, I'm happy with the way it turned out. Having an outswing, there's tons of, of videos on YouTube of in-swing. Uh, bookcase doors and, and hidden doors and stuff, but I didn't find one outswing door. So um, I had to kind of use my noodle a little bit and, and figure out how I was going to make it swing out. That was the hardest part and still be hidden. Um, so I, like I said, I think it turned out pretty good. I've got some stuff on it now um, where I was just cleaning up the garage and trying to eliminate some of the, the you know, the piles of stuff that was piled up out here. Um, one thing that I am going to do that I haven't I haven't put on here yet, just because of uh, I ordered it and it's not in yet, is I got an electromagnetic door lock for it, and uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's got a keypad and it's got RF tags, um, and you can set it up. You can program it to do you know just keypad, or you have to use an RF tag or and keypad, or you know uh, keypad or RFID tag. So. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty cool, and I'm going to put that on there. It's a 350-pound magnet, so that means it takes 350 foot-pounds of torque uh, to pry it loose. A lot of doctors' offices and stuff use them. So, if nothing else, even if a robber was to see that and figure out that this was a hidden door, it's going to take 350 pounds of pulling to pry it loose from that magnet. And if you can do that, you're probably going to break it apart. So if nothing else, it's going to slow them down, even if they do find it. So um, anyway, like I said, I'm happy with the way it turned out. Let me uh, grab the camera and I'll show you a couple of close-ups. Okay, so first off, there is the hinge system. And you see I used a, a 2x4 on the front here to kind of disguise the fact that it's two different units. And then I tucked that piano hinge right in between it there, so it actually hinges off of this. So originally I was going to use one by to, to, to do my cover up, um, but that would have conflicted with my hinging and uh, it, it wouldn't have worked right. And a one by would not be sturdy enough to, to hold the pressure that this hinge has on it. Um, so the hinge goes from floor to, floor to ceiling, and these little flimsy piano hinges, they seem really flimsy when you purchase them. But when you put all those screws in there, those things are stout. I mean, that's hinged all the way up. So that's good and sturdy. Um, we went back and put a piece of toe kick in all the way across. 
and that kind of disguises the caster that's up underneath it. There's a caster under here to help hold some of the weight that's on the shelf and help it roll uh, across the concrete. So the only problem that I have found with that is that my concrete is unlevel. So right now the caster barely touches the ground and then when it gets out here it gets kind of tough. It's a half inch difference in my concrete from, from the center of that door out here to where it opens. So anyway, that's that's the hinging and, <clears throat> and the function of it. And right now I've just got a screw in it until I get my electromagnet. So I'm just going to back that screw out and uh, we'll open the, open the door up here. So right about here is where that caster really kicks in and you can see for every day coming and going that is plenty of space there to get in and out of so I mean I don't even have to open the thing all the way up I'll pull this door around here and show you what <clears throat> looks like we got plenty of room inside here to get to our door plenty of room on both sides and then this thing will actually open I can go ahead and push it the rest of the way open there so if I need to get something wide uh, you know I've got almost as much clearance as that door is and that's a 36 inch door so looking at the the actual shelving door what we did was we took two by sixes and just uh, built a frame and then we took OSB and squared it up and put on the back of it um, we put a two by four across the top up there and the reason for that is just to add some rigidity on the on the top up there because we didn't want to put another cross brace across the top because look when you're looking at standing back and looking at it you've only got that top shelf that runs across there and so across the top of the door you would have had two that ran across the top of the door and it would have totally been you know noticeable that there was something different there so we added the two by four root <coughs> for just some rigidity for the plywood and to stiffen up the door too and then um, I went ahead and took, I wanted this thing to fit as tight as possible. And when you've got a door that's six inches deep, that's six inches thick, um, you're going to rub over here if it's square. So I took and put a 30 degree miter all the way down the, the length of it. And that allows it to clear, the, clear when it goes to shut. And then back here, because our hinge is offset, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. I can't really get back there to see the hinge. Because the hinge is offset, meaning it's pushed out um, from the edge, because we've got that trim piece there where it's hinged to the 2x4, we had to put a miter on this front side here too to allow it to open here. Otherwise, it would have just been in a bind and wouldn't have opened. So um, anyway, other than that, everything's, you know, it's just the standard shelving's the same as I showed you earlier. So it's just an opening. Um, one thing you are going to want to make sure that you do is this opening has to be square. So you've got to have a good level on there, good and square across the top, or your door's not going to fit square in it. Um, and then it's, you're going to actually, you're really going to be able to tell. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and push this back around. And then, like I said, I just, I've been putting a screw in it just for now to hold it shut. And that'll hold it until I get my electromagnet uh, door lock to put on there. So anyway, like I said, it turned out really good. I'm happy with it. I mean, like I said, if you stand back here <coughs> and look, you know, just by looking at it, it doesn't necessarily look like there's anything there other than just shelving. So um, I'm happy that it turned out good. Um, said pretty simple to do any DIYer can pretty much do it um, it's not a not a hard task to accomplish just standard uh, basic carpentry um, using a screw gun and a saw and a square level and a tape measure uh, you can build that so the next project out here to get ready for the gun room uh, I, I was trying to get my garage pretty much finished up um, just so um, once I start working in the gun room, I won't have a lot of clutter out here that I have to work around because a lot of my building of the cabinets and stuff like that is going to take place out here. So I've tried to clean up. That door there is for one of the doors inside the house. So we'll get that put in tomorrow. That'll be out of the way. Got the rest of the OSB up on the walls, hiding, covering up that insulation. Um, 
you know, and it, you can't see it, but I built a little organization rack for the weed eater and the leaf blower today. Um, just trying to get, you know, things cleaned up. Uh, food storage shelves. Got a lot of the clutter off of those. Like I said, it's hard to see because it's so dark in, in here. Excuse me. Got a lot of clutter off of those and put it on the shelf. <clears throat> but anyway, the next step for the gun room is uh, we talked about in one of the other videos having compressed air in, in the shop. Um, well, I don't want a compressor <coughs> inside the shop, and I've got this compressor here. It's not a big compressor, but it's not a small compressor either. Um, and it is, uh, it, it, you know, it's a it's a 26 gallon compressor. Plenty of air uh, for anything I need in this shop and in the gun shop. So what I'm going to do is put in an air supply system, and basically I'm going to be using PEX tubing. I, I've never seen it done with PEX tubing before, but I'm going to try it. Uh, standard half inch PEX tubing has a pressure, maximum pressure of 160 PSI and my air compressor maxes out at 150 PSI. So in theory it should work. Um, so we're going to try it with PEX. So I have a, a hook up here and then the PEX tubing <clears throat> will go up the wall and then I can just plug right into my compressor with a small air hose, with a little short air hose and I can charge my air system. And uh, the air system will go up and tee off and go to the uh, to the gun shop up overhead. Uh, it'll drop down for the gun shop, and then I'm also going to run one over, and then right on the end of that beam right there, I'm going to I've got this um, snap-on retractable hose reel. Uh, I don't even remember where I got that from, but I've had it for like 10 years probably, and I never used it before. So uh, I know they're pretty expensive, and I like the idea of, of it being convenient like that. And so I'll have ready, readily available air for uh, you know changing a tire or anything like that that I need to do out here, running a DA grinder or, sand, or DA sander or side cutter, anything like that. Um, and so I'll have air there, and then also be able to have air in my shop on the same compressor. So. That's another project. We still got to do the uh, finish electrical, but we got to get the, the sheeting and the insulation up inside the shop. And we also need to get the decking put up in the loft so that we can finish our ceiling in the shop as well. Um, so a lot of, lot of cool projects coming up. Um, anyway, I think that's going to be it for this video. Like I said, uh, not necessarily a gun shop video, but... Um, a part of the gun shop series so anyway guys until next time get out there shoot some guns be safe and most importantly have fun see you guys later